So in the last video, we gave this informal definition of the limit, right? Um, and and we, we had this language here that we weren't entirely happy with, right? Arbitrarily close, sufficiently close, right? So we, we've struck that language. Um, we've struck the in, in informal. We're going to move to a formal definition here. Uh, now, the, the preamble can, can stay the same. All of this part is going to be the same. All we're going to change is we're going to make precise what we mean by arbitrarily close and sufficiently close. Okay? And, and the hint comes from the picture, right? So if you kind of zoom in on this here, right? So you've got, you've got your little bit of the y-axis here, right? Here's your y-axis, okay? Um, somewhere here is your, your L value. And we've decided that close means within a certain distance, right? So this distance here is traditional to label this distance with the Greek letter epsilon, okay? So this here is the Greek letter epsilon, okay? Um, so we think of this as, as sort of an error. Or a tolerance, or well, how close do we want to be? Right, arbitrarily close. Right. So, so epsilon is saying how how close we want f of x to be from L. Right. So that means that we we have this range of values here between L plus epsilon and L minus epsilon. Right. Um, now, the arbitrary part of this, right, um, well, how do you handle that? Well, like I said, if, if we're playing this game where I want to get f of x in this range, and, and you get to tell me how close, right, so you get to decide how close. So the arbitrary is no matter how close you tell me to make it, I can pull it off, right? So. It means that we need this to work for any epsilon that you choose, right? Um, except, well, not just any. It, it has to be, you know, it's, it's, we're thinking of it as this error or this distance. So it had better be positive, right? So epsilon should be positive. So that means that if we look up here, we want we want f of x to be in this range from L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon, okay? Well, we can, we, can re, we can rewrite this a little bit. If we subtract L from all three parts of the inequality, we can write it like this. Um, or another way to write this is we need the absolute value of f of x minus l, right? And remember, this is just a distance, right? It's, it's how far apart these two numbers are. We want that distance to be less than epsilon, okay? So that's, that's our answer to how close when we're talking about the values for f of x, right? When we're talking about the, the y values. So now you have to come up with the same answer for the x value. So down here in the x range, right, you got the same thing going on. You've got c is sitting here somewhere. And there's, there's some range of values that we got from here. Now, now, this range is not necessarily symmetric, right? If we made this symmetric, it, it doesn't follow that this is going to be symmetric about c, because our function might grow faster on one side of c than the other. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to get something that, that looks like that, OK? So we can take the larger of those two distances, and we can call that delta, OK? And so then we just kind of, you know, we can extend a little bit on the other side to there, right? 
And, and so then that means that we want, so we have this uh, delta here, and let me tell you that delta, so again, Greek letter. Um, so delta for, for distance, if you like, it's, it's the answer to how close in the sufficiently close, right? So this is, the, the sufficiency is, is coming from this delta, right? So now we need, so given this range for f of x, we need x to be between c minus delta and c plus delta. Ah. I said something wrong, didn't I? We don't want to take the bigger of the two distances. We want to take the smaller. We want to take the small one, right? We want to make sure that we stay within this range. So this, that would let us go out. No, we want to be in, right? So delta is the smaller of the two gaps on either side of C. So, so as long as X is between C minus delta and C plus delta, well, then if I choose an X value in that range, I'm, I'm inside this interval, and so my Y value is going to be inside that interval. That's the game, okay? Um, and again, we can rewrite this similarly to what we have up here as saying that the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. Um, now, remember that we also want, we don't want to let x equal to c. And one of the ways we can guarantee that is to say, well, that means this difference can't be zero. So we want that absolute value to be bigger than zero but smaller than delta, right? Uh, with those restrictions in place, we can, uh, we can make this work. Uh, all right, so now we're ready to state the definition. We have all the ingredients, right? So, so what the definition now says is that the limit is L, and we write, we write it like this. The limit as x approaches a of f of x is L. Um, this means that... for any epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a delta bigger than zero such that for all x, If the distance between x and c is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Okay, so that's the definition. Uh, so again, it's, it's it, it looks intimidating the first time you see it, but all it's doing is making precise these notions of closeness that are in the informal definition, right? It's saying that if you want your y value to be in this range around L, you need to choose x values in this corresponding range around C, right? Um, and as long as you can always do that, right? So as long as no matter how small you shrink this interval, you can always find a corresponding interval around C, as long as you can always do that, the limit exists, and it has that value L, right? Um, and so the way, the way the game is played is epsilon is given to you, and we won't actually specify the value because, we, again, we want this notion of arbitrariness here, right? Arbitrarily close. So epsilon is not specified. Uh, but given that epsilon, you got to show that you can come up with a delta. No matter what epsilon you're given, you can come up with a delta. Uh, so we'll show how that works in the next few examples.